edition of the On The Mic podcast. And uh, a couple episodes ago, I talked to this man's opponent. And uh, as I talked to his opponent, uh, we noted just how special it was for two fighters who will face each other to have the utmost respect for each other, especially when his opponent just hated the guy he just fought. Uh, I have a lot of respect for the guy joining me now. First time on the show. Hopefully I do a great job and it won't be the only time on this show. Bubba Jenkins, PFL, featherweight world. What up with it? What up with it? What up? Sir, how are you? Bad man things. Them know, you know, them so know, you know. Uh, man, I'm loving life. I'm I'm feeling good, man. Relaxing. Got some chubby cheeks going on a little bit. I'm over here, man, just doing a little business, trying to make sure that, you know, we, we focus on the next moment at task, but also we focus on building that, that brand up, man. You know, I'm, I'm, it's a culmination of, you know, my career coming to a head and, you know, the fans and the friends and the family that have been close to me, they know it's that time, you know, them so no. There, there's so many layers right there just to pick apart because one, I'm going to start with the fun part. I'm going to start with the chubby cheeks part, right? Like obviously you're a professional. You look at your resume. There's no doubting that you understand how to be a professional each and every time you step, whether it was on the mats or into a cage, you know how to be a professional. But when you have such a break in between a world title fight and your last fight, do you, do you take some time to kind of just enjoy it right now? Oh, yeah, absolutely. We went to Legoland with the babies. We was in San Diego on the beach hanging out. You know, I've been putting a little bit of extra cheese on this. You know, if my babies get some ice cream, you know, go ahead, get, you know, get, get daddy one of them to do, you know, if they don't finish it, you know, in, in camp, I wouldn't have to we just go ahead and throw it out. But, you know, now if they don't finish it, you know, go ahead and, you know, give daddy his due and let me go ahead and finish that, you know, that ice cream or that, you know, that ice cream sandwich or whatever they got. So, you know, yeah, we definitely enjoy ourselves a little bit more. A happy fighter, as Dewey says, is a dangerous fighter. So we just try to stay happy and a bunch of enjoy. But yeah, man, the game, the fight game is already tumultuous enough. It's already intense enough. So when you finally get that little break where you can look ahead, build a game plan, relax, recover, um, you know, spend time with the family, do all the necessary things it needs to do to have that mental health, then yeah, man, you you really you really take the time to, you know, be strategic with, you know, the, the break. Absolutely. And, and kind of to that, what I love about what you just said in the, in the first answer was talking about building your brand. And I think there's no better time, right? Like I'm talking to you just about two months before this fight against Brendan Lockman in the PFL world title fight. But this is now the time. It's not a week before fight. It's not after the fight. You know, some fighters wait until the moment, whether it's the moment before or the moment after to try to build their brand, you now have two months to really build. And by the way, you don't have to build up who Bubba Jenkins is. If people don't know who Bubba Jenkins is, they shouldn't be covering this sport or watching this sport. Listen, b- build new fans all day long, but the way you have gone about your career from the collegiate all American to a now world titles waiting for you. I mean, the, the Bubba Jenkins, it's a good time to be Bubba Jenkins, but, but why is it important to focus on your brand consistently and not just be like, cause there's fighters who want to do that, but then they just want the fights to speak for themselves. And those are the fighters who have to beg for more money. I hate to say what it is, but it is what it is. Yeah, no, for sure. If you don't have a personality, if you can't be somebody inside the cage and outside the cage that puts fans in the stands and entertains people, then yeah, I can understand the fans not wanting to show up to a lot of your events or not wanting to sit in front of a camera or even wait till after you fight to hear what you got to say. People want to know what I got to say after my fight. People want to know what I got to say about my opponent before the fight because sometimes it's going to be the realest shit you ever heard or sometimes it's going to be the funniest shit you ever heard or sometimes it's just going to be 100% bad, man. It's going to be 100% me. Um, I got this survivor attack and I got flex on them because, man, we've been through so much to not only build the brand, but I've been saying them soon no for years. You know what I'm saying? I've been, been, I've been a bad man for years. It's now just now that people are relating Bubba bad man to the, to the, to the track. It's now where them soon know. So people who don't know are now getting on the bandwagon of, oh, damn soon no, we've been known about bad man. Oh, uh, uh, we run things, things so run we. That's all bad man. No, no, y'all just now getting to the bandwagon. My real fans, my real supporters, the real grinders been knowing that I've been taking people down and been slaying cats. We ain't been laying and praying. We've been laying and slaying since the day we got in the game. If I get you on the ground, I'm gonna try to rob you of your faculties and your consciousness. 
business. That's all I've been doing since day one. And now that we can do it on our feet, now we ain't just the shark in the water. Now we alligators. If you don't want to come in the water, I'll come up on land and I'm going to get up at your grill. That's something that I've been capable of doing since getting with Dewey Cooper. So now that we're showing the culmination of a champion, now that we're showing that I'm world title bound and I'm one of the best fighters in the world, now the whole personality and the, all the other stuff that I've been doing, that I've been a part of, now it comes with the substance of being one of the best fighters. Now it comes with the intelligence of carrying that flag of knowing I'm not trying to build a Conor McGregor. I'm not trying to build a nothing, nothing but who I am. I'm the realest that I know to be, and that's who I am. Bad man. Well, I want to make it clear, especially when, once you got with Dewey Cooper, because that was one of the first coaches to open up his doors to me as far as a media guy, and I've been following him for a while. Once you were with Dewey, that's when I really was all about bad man Bubba Jenkins. And uh, the only reason we haven't talked is because I've had no way to get in contact with you. Thankfully, the PFL has set this interview up. And uh, like I said, when I first got you on here, hopefully it's not the last time. But uh, I, I just love the accolades, man. I love the respect you show to the game. And I, I think when you talked about, you know, not trying to be the next Conor McGregor, I think that's the problem with, with this sport, unfortunately, because... Yeah. Th those who talk do get the interest and they get the attention and most likely they get a lot more money, but there's a way to go about it and create your own brand and not have to do everything that he did. It's, it's always great. I, listen, you're, you're wearing a, you're wearing a Sixers Jersey, every player. And I'm from Chicago. Every player since 1992 has wanted to come in and be Michael Jordan. And, and I'm not here to talk Jordan or Kobe or LeBron or any of that. But the fact of the matter is when somebody breaks open the gates, everyone that follows wants to, emulate some type of it so I, I credit you to, to staying focused on your brand and on your career and not try to take from others and I really want to say with a lot of respect it goes to your collegiate career and that's something where you know, there's so many layers to that but just how did your wrestling background and, and your accolades at the highest level division one all American not once uh I'll let you guys figure that it was twice um but you know having to do all of that how did that prepare you for what MMA has become man bro I'm a two-time NCAA finalist but I'm also like you got to think about the perspective I grew up in Virginia Virginia isn't the most sound when it comes to bias and racism and things like that and it definitely you know me having the AI the Michael Vick, the Percy Harvin genre and generation to not only mentor the Sweet Pea Whitakers, like these are people that I rub elbows with. These are people that I know. These are people that I have conversations with. These are people that like influence me and, you know, help motivate me. I'm in a sport. I was in a sport in wrestling where, you know what I'm saying, they didn't want to see, you know, a young African-American, um, intelligent, braggadocious, kind of bombastic person, try, you know, beating you know, these, you know, homegrown, you know, different pigment athletes, you know, that everybody knew was their sport. You know, me coming into the game in Virginia, beating white people in their in, 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 in their sport, you know, it, it grew a kind of a cognitation and kind of a background that I'm that I'm cocky, that I'm, you know, not this confident that I'm, you know, it, it, it had to build me into this chip on my shoulder kind of persona and the uh, the atmosphere that I was incubated and born in birthed what I was preparing for myself in, in MMA. You know, me being in the mixed martial arts world is definitely a, a, a residue of the, the, the system I was born in to become the wrestler that I became. The reason why that I won nationals in Philly against the Penn State kid who hadn't lost is because I was already Bubba Jenkins in Virginia wrestling for a state championship when they weren't trying to let me on the mats. I got expelled my senior year for some things that happened outside of school, off school grounds. And they were still trying to get your boy for everything that, you know, had nothing to do with my wrestling abilities. Um, I was ranked in the nation. I've won more national championships than I've won state championships in high school, simply because of the state that I was in and, the, and who I was as an athlete. I'm the Allen Iverson and the Michael Vick of MMA. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I I, I have that persona where I'm not trying to be anybody. I'm just trying to be real. And I happen to be from Athlete Factory. I happen to be Eclipse Pharrell uh, residue of my era. I just happen to be real in what I do and who I am. So the fact that wrestling has molded me into that warrior to prepare for mixed martial arts is just one and one and the same. And the fact that my nickname is the bad man just goes in with how real and how real I am and how real I've been. Well, Bubba, if you don't mind, you know, 
I'm not the most technical guy. I'm not going to break your fight down from a technical standpoint. And I know you fighters hate that anyway, but I really want to give you the stage and the platform to, to tell everyone whether they think they've been with you for a while or they're just getting to get on board with you now. I want people to know Bubba Jenkins. So I want to go back, if you don't mind, to Virginia yeah. and, and, you know, talk about those athletes. Because before I started covering MMA, football and basketball was everything I covered. And I'm like I said, I'm from Chicago. And, and yeah, Michael Jordan, I was born in 92. So I was a baby for that. But there was one athlete I knew who could go one way or the other because his brothers went the other way. And that's Derrick Rose. And, and I was growing up at the same time as Derrick Rose. And every game was an event for the entire city. And his brothers would do what they had to do, but they were caught in a different life. That's something at, at where you're from, where the guys you mentioned, the Allen Iverson and Michael Vick, they all went through that. So before I just ask you about how you got through MMA, just talk to me about what that's like. Because you talked already about how the odds were stacked against you just being a wrestler. But when you live in, a, in an area where your life could really go one of two ways and you persevered and made it through, what was that like? Man, it's the perfect balance, bro, because, you know what I'm saying, I'm, 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 a, I'm a blessed soul, but I'm also, I know that I'm a lucky uh, soul as well, because I have friends that I grew up with that are not here. I got people who are younger than me, who I knew were going to be great athletes who are not here. I have people who are older than me, who were going off to be amazing athletes, who got taken way before their time. So to see that, you just try to move with examples. You just try to move with an understanding. You try to move with knowing, you know, people getting shot at Waffle House these days. You know, people getting killed, you know, eating out with their family just to drop in locations. You know, that's why I have such a strong belief in Christ or such a strong belief in my father, which are in heaven, because, you know, every day there's such there's something to take you away or something to, to really try to distract you from who you're supposed to be in your ultimate calling. And at the end of the day, no matter what you believe in, your ultimate calling is, is, a, is an abundant you, is a, is a you that's loving more people. It's a you that facilitates and, and, and helps more people. It's never someone who brings knowledge and then goes back to the house and then keeps that knowledge within. It's never someone who gets love and then goes back to where they belong or where they're from and keeps that love with it within. That's never going to be the most abundant best self of that person it's always going to be someone more giving and sharing and caring so to see how death manipulates its way through our community to see how death manipulates its way through you know just through society in general but definitely for the young brown and black man it's it's just a, an understanding that we got to move more cautiously but with more love and more understanding that we have to have a belief in something because you got to be protected unless unless anything can happen well, beautifully said, my man. And also, you know, given where you're from, a lot of people would think those that, that were born around and, and your age, they want to go basketball or football. And, and you chose wrestling and then you chose mixed martial arts. How did you get away and, and focus? Like what brought you to wrestling and, and well, all wrestling chose me to be real like i was i was recruited for football i was on i was recruited for basketball my my crossover ask anybody who know about me my crossover emulates ais do not stand in front of me with your knees bow-legged i will clack them things together like i'm real i'm a real athlete the fact that i happen to be a wrestler like i'm an athlete that wrestles i'm not a wrestler who's an athletic i play football both ways i got recruited all over the country and, and to big schools for football. But I was one of the top recruits in the country for wrestling. And I can go anywhere in the world, anywhere in the country for wrestling, or I have to pick and choose if I was going to get some play. If I was, you know, I'm five, eight, five, nine with some Tim's on on a good day with some slouch socks. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, the fact that, I, you, know, I, you know, and I ran about a four, four, it won't four, three being at a five, seven, five, eight, you know, I'm much more quicker than I am fast. You know what I'm saying you catch me in a hole, I'm, I'm, I'm in and out, boom, boom, boom. I'm, I'm into to the loan. But if I get to the outside and I try to break away speed, I'm gonna have to juke some people and you know, I got power. So I'm gonna run some people over. But when it comes to like me being the little guy, I'm more of a power little guy than a scat back, but I could have definitely transitioned to a wide receiver or something like that. Like, trust me, Julian Edelman ain't got nothing on my my street cred football day. Like I was a scat back for days. If you catch me in the in the slot, no bad man getting the getting TDs. But I happened to have wrestling as one of the things that fell in love with me, <laughs> and it was going to take me to a higher level than any of those other things did. I was in a much competitive area where football and wrestling was much more. I mean, football and basketball was much more saturated with some of the most elite athletes that this country has ever seen and 
if it wasn't due to streets or schooling, some of these guys would still be making millions to this day. Um, truly, uh, you know, it, it, it speaks to a testament of how great the athletes in that DMV area are. Um, but nonetheless, wrestling is just something that I saw as my avenue out and my avenue to being the better athlete and fighting that I can be. I absolutely love it. And I do think kind of your, your life story leads into, you know, how you competed on the mat, how you compete inside the cage. And I'm never one to challenge anyone, but when you go in in November and you, and you take care of business in November, when, when the off season is here, if I, if we ever can make it happen, I used to play some ball back in the day. We're about the same height. I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm not throwing it out there, but uh, you know, I, I've always wanted to explore and try to do new things with, with yeah, world class yeah, fighters. A Batman basketball challenge. Yeah, <laughs> just a little Batman basketball challenge, man. And we, can, gonna, we look, I got the zip ups right now. I'm ready to ball. Let's I love go. it. Oh, I, let's go. I, I'll say this. This is how I know you're a true hooper or not. True or false. A true hooper always wears basketball shorts, no matter what pants he's wearing above. Always. Always, always, always. yeah. Yep. But hey, man, I, I, in, in all sincerity, if uh, everything goes according to plan, when the PFL season is over, I'd absolutely love to get with you and your team and see what we could ever come up with. I think that would be great. Get some attention, maybe raise some money. Uh, uh, yeah. You know, in your name, it'd be it'd be something a lot of fun, something I'd love to explore. But let's let's get down to fighting. That's why we're here. I talked about a man that uh, I have a lot of respect for, and Dewey Cooper. You mentioned him as well. What has that connection been like for you? I see he's all over the world. He works with everybody and anybody, which I absolutely love. But everyone he works with gets 150% commitment from him. And the reality that he brings to a corner in between rounds, in the gym, everything that makes Dewey Cooper special. Bubba Jenkins, I ask you, what makes that relationship so strong between you two? Man, Dewey Cooper is one of the most genuine, genuine and most awesome human beings that you can meet. You know, he's been through and seen so much. Um, violence and, 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 and turmoil and tribulation that the fact that he gives so much love and, and, and respect to every individual he meets. He has a game plan and a custom workout and training session for every individual that wants to be in his arsenal or, or in his camp. He individualizes, he focuses, he specializes, he customizes every little thing that you would need from a coach. And you don't get that everywhere. You can't find that anywhere. You just got to know when you're around him, you start to see and feel, damn, that dude's special. <clears throat> the way that he can go back to back to back for days and hours with different training partners for different sports, for different South Paul, North Orthodox, karate guys, kickboxing, boxers, Muay Thai, it doesn't matter. He's seen it, done it, trained them, coached them and has a love and respect for their, not only their ability, but their worth ethic. He's a guy that if you give them your worth ethic, you give them your heart, you give them that training, you give them that, that intensity, he's going to give you everything until he passes out. And if he goes into black Cobra mode, he not passing out. He, he on another level. When he lock into from Dewey Cooper to black Cobra mode, I mean, he takes you to another level and, and it's exciting to be a part of. You can hear that, that old school DMX heart of the soul in him. That, 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 that growl, that, that grit. He's old school with the mix of understanding of the new school mentality. <clears throat> Dewey Cooper is everything. He's been everything to my career. I would have been, I would have been Kevin Lee before Kevin Lee had I known Dewey Cooper five years ago. You feel me? Like my career would have been at another level had I known Dewey Cooper five years ago. I'm grateful for the things that I've been through and the coaches that I had and the things that I learned. But where I'm at right now is world title level because I have a world title coach. I mean, greatly said there, and I got to agree. I mean, I, I think I met Black Cobra Dewey Cooper the night before a, a Kevin Lee fight. You know, I was up in Milwaukee, and uh, it was Kevin Lee, Ally Quinta, and I just heard a different Dewey from the Dewey I had talked to. I'm like, man, it's 24 hours before fight night. All right, I got, I got Black Cobra Dewey here. But uh, yeah, no, I, you that, fought Black Cobra's toes. That, that dude to cut you. That dude, Black Cobra, he, he, he about that life. He, I've been, we've been ready to scuffle, tumble, couple in many different odd situations you know what i'm saying just being out here in the streets that dude's a real dude 
I no, I have the utmost respect for him, and I'm not just saying that. I do mean that sincerely. Uh, I want to ask you about PFL. You fought all over the world. You you've you've been through other promotions, but and I know last season did not go how you wanted it to. But what a difference a year makes! And there's not many times in MMA that you're allowed to say that. You could talk about other promotions, UFC, Bellator, whatever you you know where you fought before. Uh, other promotions, one year could ruin you. And with PFL, it did not. And now you're right there. So what has PFL meant to you in your career? And what was different this year than last year? Well, the difference in this year is outside the cage. My focus, my my joy, my children are situated. Last year, I was going through divorce. I was going through so much turmoil inside and outside the cage, touching money that I had never really touched before, being with the PFL, having them change my life in so many different ways. I mean, it's been a blessing. PFL in the organization fighting on ESPN, giving us that platform, giving us a chance every year to fight our ways, not only to a world championship, being a world title holder, contending for a championship every year, but also having that bonus to change our lives, to change our families and our future and the inheritance of our children. You know, that's something that you can't just talk about without really feeling that from a perspective of I'm living it. They changed my life. There are not many organizations that have really touch each fighter that they have come through. Now there's things that obviously we all can improve on. And, um, you know, me being a, a company guy in every organization that I've been through, I just always speak the real, but this company for sure is doing different things than a lot of the other companies that I've been in simply because they truly care about us on inside the cage and outside the cage. Um, they are talking to us about different topics all the time. And, um, you know, I had a mental case last year, just a mental um, issue last year where I, I wanted to bring my dog to um, to the quarantine just because the first quarantine was so tough and you know they opened their arms and, and you know we got it situated with the hotel and everything like that and you know it was it was nothing but a love and respect from them from my perspective and, and just giving um, the utmost understanding that this fight game isn't like other sports you know we're putting our life on the line we're really fasting and, 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 and cutting weight and, and, and leaving our children, leaving our family, changing our mentality, changing our personality for a certain period of time, just so we can be who we need to be on fight night. It really changes. It, it, it's a lifestyle. It goes more into just showing in basketball and shooting some hoops or, 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 or thinking about the game plan. It's a really, it could seriously be a life or death situation. And the fact that, you know, there are some organizations that overlook the importance of how to take care of our, us as fighters it's truly a blessing to see how they're doing and what they're doing. And I'm just blessed to be a part of it, excited that I, I represent them. And hopefully real soon, I'll be representing them as not only the world champion, but uh, a, a, an advocate for higher pay for MMA fighters, because I'll be a, a known fighter to be have, have made that million dollar mark. Absolutely. And uh, I don't want to keep you too much longer. I got a few more here for you. Um, and, everything you said. It, it's so great to hear that from a promotional standpoint on, on the fight side of things, man, I, I don't want to jump the gun, but in, you know, they've been talking about bigger fights. They've been talking about crossover open door, if you will, with other promotions. If you go in and do what you expect to do in November, come 2023, how badly does Bubba Jenkins want to show the entire world? He's the best by the way in the world. One second, one second. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> Which one is easy? Mine? Uh, that one. Yeah. Got my Dukes right here. Working. I love it. Hi, nice to meet you. Let T boxing on it right here. Nice to meet you. So we was just chopping it up, but we'll, we'll details. Yeah. Yeah, details. Appreciate it, Eric. Thank you. No All right. All right. Uh, we'll talk soon. Yep. Say that last question again. My bad, dog. No, you're good, man. Like I said, I don't want to keep you too much longer. But uh, I, you know, PFL has been talking about bigger fights and uh kind of an open door if you will with crossover yeah i'm the best 145er in the world and when i become the world champion i'm going to be screaming that off the hills but i don't mind the cross promotion you know people have been asking me about shane coming over they better ask shane about bubba J. they better ask shane about batman um he, he didn't win no divisions he didn't win no organizations and last time i checked he got released from the organization that he's you know that everybody was like hey he's a bad he's he's a, he's a tough fighter I'm focused on me versus me. If they want to do the cross promotions and see what other organizations is out there that want to test some of the best fighters in the world, I'm all up for it. I've ran from no man. I ain't going to start choosing today to start running, as the lyrics say. 
but I've been in some of the toughest weight classes that they've ever been. I'm 145 pounds, which is one of the average sizes of a bad man. You feel me? As far as like being in the toughest weight classes and the toughest athletes of all strength, intelligence, physical physique, things like that. So I run from no man and I'm feeling I, I'm at one of the highest and top peaks in my career. I have one of the best coaches in my corner. So we run teams, teams don't run we. They come get it, they come come see. I don't know, uh, I didn't want to ask you this, but you mentioned fighter pay. So this be my one question and only question. How do you feel about Jake Paul and what he's advocating for in combat sports, particularly MMA and love it. better? You love it? Love it, love it. Um, put Jake Paul on the biggest microphones, on the biggest stages. Um, I love what he's doing for the sport. He's an advocate for us athletes. He's an advocate for us combatants. He's an advocate for us all getting a bigger pot. And that's coming from a dude who's making a bag in a different way than us combative athletes have made it. He understood that he actually got helicoptered to the top of the hill through his YouTube channels. We climbed our way there. I didn't find no elevator and I barely took the steps. I really had to climb the, the unmatched areas that were slick with rocks and ice. So for me to be where I am and to hear how he's speaking about what he would like for us as combatants and I'm, I say us because it's a different crime than how he came over it, it's a beautiful thing I want mixed martial arts I want boxing I want all combatants to be grateful for anybody coming over from NFL to NBA to boxing to, to, to our to our combatant league to say hey these guys need more pay because I, I don't been in the camp and I know what it's like and to get our gloves on them to get in that ring to fight for that for three minutes five minutes whatever it is these guys need to be you know definitely advance their pay and, 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 and taken care of for sure. That's one thing I do love about PFL. They bring in a lot of other sports superstars and celebrities. And I think it really opens a, a conversation for those other superstars and athletes to kind of talk about fight or pay. Now uh, I'm going to ask you one very quick question about your opponent, Brandon Lockman, November 25th. He didn't like his last opponent in Chris Wade, but shortly after his win, you guys embraced. He told me it's nothing but respect in his fight against you. I just ask you the same thing. How do you feel about Brandon Lockman going into this fight? Absolutely. Nothing but respect. I met the best man win, but me being the bad man, I feel like I'm the better man. We already going to start the, the animosity right now. Brandon Lockney is a good dude. He's fun to hang out with, but, uh, you know, he's more of an acquaintance than he is a family member. I got a million reasons why I want to take his head off. I did meet his moms and I did meet his peoples. You know, they did invite me and open and embrace me to the after party um, after they won out there in London. Um, but uh, for real, I'm trying to feed my family. I'm trying to break an inheritance. I'm trying to come to a culmination of a champion that my friends, fans and family know that I have should have been already. This is a moment far I'm becoming. So it's bigger than Lockney. It's bigger than even myself. I'm going out there to do it for 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 the bad man team. We always been doing bad man things, and Demson No has been a coat of mine for a long time. This is that moment, and he's just standing in the way of it. I've asked him this as well, and and you know he I talked to him about bringing world title to the UK. I'm going to ask you, we talked about Virginia. We've talked about your upbringing and how things could have gone differently like they did for so many. And we talked about just really how you got to where you are. So Bubba Jenkins, I know everyone wants to be a world champion. And November 25th, when you get that world title and a million dollar paycheck, and now a, a cement block, a cinder block, if you will, in your career for your legacy, what does all that mean to you when I say that? Man, it, it, it means a lot. You know, it, I'm an uncrowned king. People who know and who've been seeing me walk as the warrior that I've been walking, standing on the faith, having Christ, you know, go before me, having my anointing follow behind me. People who know that I've been coming and been working the right way, been grinding the right way, been taking my losses and licking, taking, keeping on taking the right way, been loving my children, been loving my family, been, been supporting my, my fellow athletes the right way. People who know are, are going to really see that man there is a way to do it and there's a way not to do it i didn't talk my way into being here i worked and i grinded if i'm not the american dream what is you know what i mean if i'm not the moment that everybody hopes to have in their lifetime where they've dealt with tribulation where they've dealt with loss where they've dealt with you know having to climb and keep coming back if i'm not the pinnacle of that moment then what is you know what i'm saying i'm an example of what it's like to just keep coming back and being true to who you are being true to the sport being true to your friends family the people who support you and then being the shade and the fruit that feeds some people later after they bring you to that moment and i believe i'm in that moment what would all of this and i know what it means for you your family your career but 15 years and, and sorry if i'm if i'm saying you're not going to be fighting in 15 years but 15 years 20 years from now man what when it's all said and done, obviously 
you're, you're a great father, you're a family man. But when you achieve all these things that you've set out to do, and you've done it in both wrestling and mixed martial arts, if everything comes to fruition at the end of 2022, when you look back and you get to have that conversation with your kids, are, are you just hoping to excel at the highest level to really not just financially set a way for them, but the way you did things, the way you went about work, the way you went about life to really set the example and pave the way for them in their future? 100%, man. Um, when I'm going to hang up the gloves, when I tie up my wrestling shoes and put them down and then I hand the torch to my son and my daughters or the, the people who are under the bad man tree of, you know, because I'm going to start a coaching tree. I'm not going to just hang it up. Uh, you know, the influence of me being able to just show them the way that I did it, show them the way through Christ that I that my footsteps were guided. That's that's the biggest thing for me. Obviously, they have eyeballs on me. I have six eyeballs on me at all times. I have three children and the focus that they have on me they hear things that i don't believe i even said they see things that i'm not sure that i knew i did you know to know that they are the pinnacle the apple of my eye is the is the biggest reason why i do it the way i do it and i'm going to not only leave examples for them but there will be people that come up under the 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 bad man team flag that truly resemble who i was and how i did it and and understanding the course that I'll be teaching, the course that I'll be giving. It's, it's, it's not just I'm becoming blessed so I can be blessed. It's I'm becoming blessed so I can be a blessing to others and show people that, you know, there's more way to more way to feed the family. That's beautifully said. Very easy question here. What should we expect November 25th? You should expect bad man to be a world champion. Every All way, right. that's it. I'm going to dominate in everything that they have to offer. Everything that Brandon Lightning brings to the table, he will be best at that. I will become a world champion in November. I, I don't ask for predictions. That's not my style. That's not my thing. Bubba Jenkins, I want to thank you for all your time. And uh, I appreciate you being so charismatic. Um, it, it's hard sometimes to get a fighter to open up, especially when everything they've worked for is just right there in front of them. And uh, I, I knew I was a fan of you for a reason uh, as a person and as a fighter. And I'm not just saying that because you're here. I mean that sincerely. So I would love to have you back on after, after November. And uh, you know what? I, I just hope to talk to you after your next fight. Yes, sir, big dog. We're going to definitely do it. I'm coming back. We're going to sit down. I have a better little background. I have a world champion set up for it. Then top it up, man. Definitely got a ball soon. So I appreciate the interview. Appreciate you for blasting it, man. And I'm going to definitely post it when you post it. So I appreciate it.